Jacuzzi Meister Butler, cutest thing in the whole entire universe, now, sunshine of my life. That's a greeting, episode 529. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Suze. How are you doing? Real good over here. Um, yeah, the sun's a shining. The sun or what? is a shining. All is well. I'm totally enjoying the summer weather. Yeah. In all its glory. Oh my God, it's so hot over oh, here. Oh, I saw that. I am not jealous. Holy fuck. Holy fuck balls. I even have air conditioning. It like doesn't, but I have air conditioning from like, I think when they invented air conditioning. <laughs> and so it sounds like. Yeah. A freight train. Yeah. Like, you mm-hmm. know how, how, when we see like the first computers were like, Oh, that's so silly. Yeah. Now look at how big they were. This turns on and it's like, Oh, look at how silly that sounds God. insane. So, but I totally forgot, but then remembered that I have that mobile AC unit. Oh, good. That you and I have passed back and forth and back and forth. forth. Yes. And then uh, my mom looks at me. She's like, are you kidding me? You got to get, you You had an AC unit and you didn't (laughs) even know about it. I was like, I forgot. I'm sorry. So now we've been enjoying nice cool weather. So yes. Yeah. That climate change situation is not going well for Los Angeles. Holy crud. I'm worried about, you know, fires, but... That's what I mean. If the earthquake doesn't get us, the fires will. Yeah, it's not good. Or the real estate prices. I don't know which is worse. Yeah. I mean, people like to point out, they're always like, oh, I can't believe you're not in LA right now. Don't you miss the weather? I'm like, well, the weather, it's it's not as great as people think. Like, there's a yeah. lot of downsides. The, the heat this waves are problematic. We're in a desert. Yeah. But we're in a desert that somebody made is cosplaying look as like yes paradise. oh my god yes oh okay. you know what happens like when you buy the wrong kind of plants for the environment and then yeah. you put them there and they like last for a while but then after a while they're like this isn't where we're supposed to be yeah that is what's happening with the entire state of california now oh my god i'm not we're jealous all, all the plants up there. i'm not yeah so there you go i'll take the snow um yeah. This is just a quick thing I saw the other day on Twitter that I didn't know that ABC or one of the networks was doing a reality show called uh, Slip and Slide, which is just like it sounds. Um, oh my God. I love those. But it had to be oh. shut down because of a shitty grass. situation. Literally. <gasps> what? What? <gasps> what? Like E. coli on the old Slip and Slide. And then... Um, Stop Because I guess... This, there's a huge who slip had, and slide. Who had, who had DIA? Like all the crew. Oh. <laughs> the whole crew was Wait, like down what? to the count. So I guess they made this humongous slip and slide. But That's then it, actually worst case scenario. Right. <laughs> and it's here an we AWH, thought a rock though. in the way would be the way. Would be yeah. The well. Thing to take people out. I guess at the end of the slide, they land in a lake and the... Or a pond or oh. whatever, and it just was not safe water, and they didn't know. How gross is that, Seuss? Yeah, I absolutely like think it's the grossest, which <laughs> is why I still have a problem with some of the lakes that they tossed yes, us into. Totally in the middle of the Czech Republic mm-hmm. or Namibia, Africa, and I swear, like. Certain things haven't been the same since. Yeah, you, like in your vagina. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know? I know they weren't testing for bacteria or whatever before right. we were tossed into those. Like, pools. I mean, don't get crazy, people. It's like normal, but it's just like we'll call her <laughs> extra sensitive. I don't want people to be like vagina shaming me out there. No, no one was thinking that. things are like funky. It's like f- lovely. It's just. <laughs> I have to like, uh, like Susie once said, hey, can I wash these for you? And I was like, no, because you have the wrong kind of soap. Oh, right. Yeah. It's like she that. needs very gentle. And that was like, n- like got, I think after certain lakes I swam and I think it got worse. Well, I for real, because a so, lot yeah, of the um, no water ones. I know everything about me. There you go. <sighs> whenever I did them, they were often at those like Port Authority docks. Oh, oh, so, oh my God! Were they just empty out the sewage? Yeah, like there's no way that was clean. Yes. Yeah. I mean, no. <laughs> 
So anyway, it was bound to happen. So there you go. Ew. Um, yeah. Okay. This is my first question of the day. Ugh, I don't want to swim in any. And even just watching the show now, it would be so gross to just think about poo water. Wait, like that? Oh, poo water? I don't want to think about uh, it. Gross. But I wear my shoes in the house. So but what I the hell do I know? Slides. I love slip and slides. I hate so slip and much. slides. Why do you love them? I, I, I know. And I really apologize for the time that I bought you one and it killed your lawn. I bought your child one. I didn't buy it for Susie. People. Oh, he loves slip and slides, so he's fine. right. I got him one, and then and then I remember uh, uh, Adam sent me a picture of what damage it did to yeah, the lawn. Yeah, it doesn't take much like, for it to oh totally ruin your grass. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Hey, it's but, worth it. You know, but that's it. Oh, no, they're I'm not so fun. They are dangerous, Sarah. Sarah, you, that is a hundred percent for sure. <laughs> and I didn't even like to go on them. But what is it that you like about them? The the you love the giggling the and hilarity of <laughs> for the same reason the, for the, <laughs> the giggling for the same reason that like like the reason why you and I are friends like you say the funny thing and then I like incur and I like giggle yeah. at it and laugh right. and like encourage the bad behavior yeah. in a way yes and and for you to do whatever the naughty thing is that's mm-hmm. the same thing it's like that it's like I don't want to do it but I want to laugh silly. at somebody yeah. doing it and then watching and then oh yeah. I love watching people on a slip and slide for sure yeah. I don't want to participate oh, okay I didn't know that I'm glad we made at one point in my life I think I did yeah but then I always had this like fear like well which I think is like very reasonable yes. having a you know a fear of diving head first onto fucking Ground. grass <laughs> like we think because it's wet I'll, okay now yeah. actually some of the times have become terrifying and totally dangerous <laughs> and this is i am so sorry i gave your child that death trap it is what about a broken neck <gasps> for real a broken arm you're diving head first yeah onto rocks and stuff and best case scenario, torn up bum. <laughs> yeah, right. Enema. Like what? Ha- yeah. <laughs> what happens if you just like get, go off course and then you could do like go a road off rash? Of course. Well, I don't know. No, you're right. We and also, it can get unpredictable. I remember <laughs> at camp we used to grease the runway. We would like throw. They would throw like like cooking oil or something. Yes, on it. Adam and Lincoln used dish soap. Dish soap. That was probably what they so did. So stupid. Okay. Oh, Let's move God. on. I could talk about slip and size for hours. Here's what I want to know. Do you think the <laughs> ethnic food aisle in the grocery store oh. is racist? Okay. This was a query posed by Business Insider in a video. And they showed like both sides of the coin. <laughs> different people commenting on what they thought. People that <laughs> were um, either of a different... like. Um, like people of color, you know, mm-hmm. Asian folks or whatever, mm-hmm. said that they thought that it was. And then this white guy said he <laughs> he didn't. So I'm inclined to take oh, the word I, of I, the people. Yeah, I love when the white guy, basically like the opposite of whatever they Because they were is, saying is. how like anything that becomes mainstream, like for instance, nice Italian bread, it just gets put in the bread aisle. But right. anything that's I was, still- You know what? My example in my head was bread. Oh. Or not bread, Italian. Okay. Oh, and yeah, like and Italian that's why it's food. racist. That's what they said. That Italian food has been yeah. mainstreamed enough that it's like allowed near the white people food. That is so fucked up. Yep. And the slowly things are are there. You know what? This is happening, and I'm noticing it. And then certain things are allowed, and certain things yeah. aren't. You know what is uh, um, egg noodles? That is now right. with the pasta. Yeah. And like sriracha is now it's with totally the hot racist. Sauce. Get rid of it. Okay. Get rid of it. Uh, That's let's basically do... like, oh, we we white people have okayed this item. Now I hate it even more. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, I'm totally anti this thing. I get that. Okay, so what's the other side of it? The other side, the first guy, he he just said like, um, that it's uh, he didn't make it a good enough point for me to remember. I just remember him saying like, it's just the way that. Um, would make the most sense to a consumer, and that's all that grocery stores really are caring about. It's not necessarily racist. It's to be logical for your average consumer. And if, I don't know if this is what he meant, but when I was thinking about what I believe, 
what my opinion might be. Oh. I thought, okay, well, when I am shopping for um, a Thai recipe, it is very convenient uh-huh. for me that all of the Thai ingredients are in one place. Doesn't that get you in and out of the store faster? Don't I like not like that too? I thought about that and I was like, oh, for me, it gets me in and out. Wait a second. Wait, what are you saying? That if you like, if you were a store that maybe wanted a, uh, this is totally a out like yeah. a stretch, okay. you know, but this is, I'm like going to play that side. That if you oh. were looking to, uh, Make it look like uh, certain people shop at your store. Oh, wow. You, because I'm thinking if you were to spread those items out, it would take people would have, it would pay, Yes, it would actually be to the grocery store's advantage if they were looking to lengthen the time that a customer spends in the store. Mm-hmm. They should divide those items up. Yeah. And I'm exactly like what you're saying because I don't buy a lot of the other stuff in, in any of the other middle aisles yeah. except for. International. Uh, international, yeah. like, items. And so those are usually, if I, I'm, like, in and out real quick. Mm-hmm. And they're all, oh, my goodness. And you know what? They're not, like, far. If you look, I okay, next time you go to the grocery store, let's look where they are in the grocery store. Because if, if it's in the very back where you have to go through a lot of, of other things, then it's like, ooh, they want you to shop here. If it's close to the front or the register. Yeah, mine is by the It register. fits my theory. Okay. So is mine. Um, oh, ho, ho. That's, me, a, that's a thing that I just like. Let's continue that saw. after I talk about ritual because um, yes. whatever yum. type of food that's you're nice. eating, you probably aren't getting everything you need from your diet. And so ritual is come to the rescue. They have vitamins for you. They have them for your kid. They have them for your the man in your life. They have them for postnatal, prenatal. Yes. And they all are easy on your stomach. They don't make you sick. They are formulated for what you need. So like the post, uh, like the, the pre prenatal, you know, you get your iron, you get your iodine, you get key ingredients, supports, uh, lactation, postpartum stuff. I mean, that's just one thing you don't have to think about. That was the, you just stole the words right in my mouth. I was just thinking the best part is my refill just came the other day. It is really, really nice to have that as part of my routine and feel like consistently taking care of my health. And I have a little box that says, take meds slash vitamins. And I get to check the box. Check that box. So good. Yes. I love that ritual. And it comes right to your house, like Sarah said. So it makes it so easy. Um, A mother doesn't always put her needs first, but ritual does. That's why they're offering our listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash brain candy to start essential postnatal today or any of their, any of their vitamins. Okay. So yeah, like when I'm making um, an Asian recipe, it's very helpful that all the different ingredients are in one place. So I thought, okay, that's nice. And I don't necessarily know like fish sauce, where would that go? Would it be a, the lady on the video said it was a condiment. I wouldn't know that it was a condiment. Oh, for sure. I th- I would put it next to the vinegar. So it would okay, be like vinegar. right to, it'd be like vinegar and that those would be next to the soy sauce. And then for vinegars, you would have your red, but she your was rice vinegar, like ketchup, your like red in- wine vinegar. Okay. Ketchup. Yeah. Like she was like, okay, fish condiments, sauce? like ketchup. No, she's saying it's like, con- mm, it's like soy sauce. That's it's what I think. It's more of a mix in. I she, agree with your vinegar a- idea. Ask her what her favorite th- Chinese restaurant set is. And if she says uh, uh, Panda Express. No, then- she was Asian. Or- oh, okay. I thought this was a white person who had, <laughs> no. I was like, oh no. no Are we not- listening to white people again on this? No, it was okay. actually. Oh, well, then, then that's, then I'm wrong. This woman it's definitely was like the, um owner of a company called Om Sum, which is like an Asian okay, cooking go. company. Oh, yeah. And sounds they really make yummy. the soy sauce. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So they were saying that like sriracha oh, yeah. used to be in the international aisle, but then it got so popular that they moved it to be with like the hot sauce in Tabasco. And then yeah. Chinese chips, you know, those little, little chips they put on the table at some Chinese restaurants that you eat yes. before your meal. Yes. Those are in yeah. the international section, even though they're a complete American creation. Oh. You know what I mean? Which is, there you go. The, more proof it's racist. Yeah. And, and yeah, I don't like it. And after we talked about the Museum of Disgusting Foods, some, a brainiac sent me 
this petition people are doing to get rid of um, James Corden's Spill Your Guts segment for that very reason, that they kind of make a lot of Asian cuisine seem disgusting and horrifying. Yeah. And it's yeah, not very like nice. So food is supposed to bring us together. Yeah, it's it's like, uh, I get what they're saying. and Yeah, I totally do. It makes total sense. I never thought about it before we started talking about it. Yeah. But I don't know. And weigh in. I want to know what other people think about this food aisle yeah. thing. When you think about the items that get moved and yeah. basically like... they're like, white enough now. Yes. Yeah. Like, like it's like gentrification yes. of food or like... like the, the items are like assimilated or, you know, mm-hmm. and like into, into a like hot your, sauce culture. Your, your proximity to whiteness is enough now that we can put you in the normal. Life. I, and that is really That's gross unsavory. to me and the different neighbor. Well, it's like people want to go through the whole grocery store. Why, why is it? It doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Okay. okay. We do need people to weigh in. We're white girls. What do we know? Yeah, what do we know? I I do want to know what people think, but especially people of yeah. color and marginalized communities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In our next segment, we're white women. What do we know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's basically every segment. <laughs> right? Um, I'm history. Okay. So next topic is how about how – this is something I never knew – about the um, creation and development of the automobile, which is, mm. you know how in the early days they didn't, they were just like convertibles automatically? Yes. They were just open air for. That's a really good point. Yeah. yeah I never really thought about it, but the reason yeah. is. Start us off road vehicles. <laughs> yeah. Just went really, really slow. The reason that they did not have roofs is because roofs were seen as something to do with a home and homes were feminine. So oh. they couldn't put a roof on a car because cars were supposed oh to be manly. Uh-huh, so like, uh-huh, uh-huh. and it's weird because I see a convertible as a very female. Yeah, uh, good point. Now, thing now, way to steal that back, ladies, and Michael Scott from the office. I just, uh, I cannot believe, and I kind of am seeing the parallels with this story to the way people talk about grilling now. Like grilling is manly, grilling. but cooking is feminine. Oh. Like if it's outside, yes. it's manly. Yeah. Oh my God. But inside is for ladies only. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It says car makers' assumptions about gender blinded them to potential <sighs> market for enclosed vehicles, thus delaying the industry's effort to meet the technological challenges of producing closed cars. <laughs> Come on. Oh, right. So like when men were stubborn and tried to do things that made them look cool, they they held us back. And that A tale as old as time. Yeah, people. right. I don't know why I'm ever shocked anymore, but this is funny. The, the the men who did say that they would have preferred a roof on their car were accused of being quote hen pecked by their wives, like pussy whipped. Oh my god. Can you believe? Like, you know what? It, is this like would these guys wear shorts in the in the snow? Right, is this like this. That's what I'm is that thinking. this? If, does it similar in that way? Yes. Of like, look at how tough I yeah, am. Yeah, I don't mind rain. This. I don't mind snow. This. I'm tough. I don't. I don't mind this disco. Why is comfort a yes. feminine thing? Right. Let's ask that question. Yeah. My mom and I, we were having this conversation the other day about how, you know, we are we are a family of really, really strong women. And my grandma was like tough as nails. You know, mm-hmm. she, her mother, like her mother was raised in a, in like literally in a coal mine. Like her mom passed away really young and her father raised her like mm-hmm. in the coal mine. And you can imagine like she probably didn't, wasn't a nurturing lady. Yeah. And so just raise like all these really, really tough women. And uh, they, uh, it, it was like being like, like saying you can't do something or not being able to like be tough is totally like, well, you're weak. You're like, like you not allowed in our family. Yeah. And that is like a very masculine trait. And that's something that we often get accused of, of like, oh yeah, they're very like, yeah, you know. that's what tough it out refers to. Yes. Right? And the fact, and like, that is a really 
fucked up thing that we need to push back on and said that we don't that that comfort well, and it's baloney or, anyway have you seen their man caves baloney. they love comfort comfort oh my god you're so right oh <gasps> this is all a projection thing because of pregnancy isn't it <laughs> this is like they get mad like oh look at how weak you are because they're really feeling weak themselves because yeah because they, they can't, can't make you know that and push them out yeah have you seen all these videos that are floating around of the guys who um i think uh what's her name the the gymnast Johnson. Oh yeah. I was going to say he was really tiny, but they're all, yeah. Sean Johnson, she was pregnant and she's like doing gymnastics and a bunch of cool stuff. And so she tied the same weight, uh, like medicine ball to her husband and he's like dying. It's so funny. He's like, Oh my God, I can't. This is, this is what it feels like. Wait, you have to get up with this. And she's like, yes. Well, now watch me do a handstand. It's the perfect time for me to refer to modern fertility. Yes, there you go. <laughs> what can't we do, ladies? What can't we do? You can find out if you take the modern fertility test, what you have going on in your body, how many eggs you have cooking in there, your reproductive timeline, which is very handy for people who would like to know when and if yes. to have a child, um, possible outcomes for egg freezing, IVF. These are things that are so empowering. Yes. Do you want, not want to know? Come on, everyone oh should know. Oh my gosh, that's such good information. Yeah, get your fertility info. Yeah. And the thing is, if you go to your doctor, it'll cost you an arm and a leg. <sighs> and Modern Fertility is actually affordable and you can do it privately in your house. Just send it off and then they email you the results. It's so convenient, so easy, and so affordable. I can't say enough good stuff about this company. Um, and they have a deal for you guys right now. Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash brain candy. That means your test will cost $139 instead of the several hundred or thousand plus dollars it could cost at a doctor's office. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash brain candy, modernfertility.com slash brain candy. Um, But this particular story I found in the substack of Wealth of Women, which is by Katrine Marsal, and she has a book coming out this fall, which I'm so excited about, called um, Mother of Invention, How Good Ideas Get Ignored in an Economy Built for Men. I can't (gasps) wait. Oh, that sounds so good. Our book club is going to go crazy for that. Yeah, because who would think like roofs on car would be controversial? Okay. So, see, the answer is always the patriarchy. Or the, the, it really is. The white supremacy answer, but and like, patriarchy. Like, the, who to point the finger at? Yeah. White We're supremacy. We're you, fellas. And, and the patriarchy. And white people. Yeah. Yeah. We got to call it out. We'll call it like we see it. Okay. Yeah. Next up, another what? patriarchy thing. I want to know why you mm-hmm. think this is happening. Uh, there was a study mm-hmm. done on the website Cameo, which is like pseudo celebs and like real celebs. Um, yes. who get money to make birthday videos and things like that mm-hmm. for their fans. And you set your price of what you charge for a mm-hmm. little video that you send. And it says that men charge more for their time than women. According Shocker. to an analysis of the twenty uh, so top 20 highest priced active actors Gross. on the platform, the average man was charging 626 for a cameo while the average woman charged three hundred and twenty six, um, among oh, mus- it's half. Yeah, among musicians, the average fee for a man to cut a quick video was five ninety, while the average woman in the top twenty charged three sixty two. So I'm wondering, do you think that is just because we undervalue ourselves, or do you think mm-hmm. it's because people w- are willing to pay less for women? Like, what's your take on it, or both? I think all the above. Yeah. And I also think that, you know, if you look at the income then of those, I bet the men is double. And so women are like, uh, Mm. or, or maybe like they, they, so the men price, like they're like, Oh, I need, I need. I don't know. Yeah. No, I think you're onto something because it's like, like, or even if it's like in our head, if you, price it based on like what you earn and your amount of time it would take then if you're making more already for your profession right then okay so you think it's a reflection of the existing pay gap yes Uh uh-huh yes yes and that we undervalue ourselves especially 
since a lot of them are former stars or people who were really famous during a time where that pay gap was probably even greater. Yeah. So they're like, wow, this is like, I bet they don't even do the compare. And I noticed that on our show. What? That that not our show, like us, but I mean the, could you imagine just you and me? (laughs) Uh, and Adam yeah, I knew are charging double the challenge. Um, uh, uh, the challenge, yeah. The, those a lot of the guys. I'm like, what? Are you at your damn mind? You mean that, in, like, ter- like this- in their rate on cameo? Yeah. Oh wow. Where it's like men are definitely, I think, charging themselves more. I would wonder what the what the reality star one is. Take a little peeky peek. What is your that. rate? Do you feel comfortable sharing? Oh, of course. Okay. It's like fully available. I don't even, let me, let me see. Let me see. Oh my goodness. I am uh, at, I want to say like $38 or something like that. Okay. And I saw Wes is 80. Eight. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm just saying. Right. $80. I just don't think that, that, that to me, it, it's not fair. To the kind of like, I want people, I want everybody to be able to like. That's so nice. See, this you know, is so another that, reason that women that's think it for oh, me I is I think about who would want to get that and the people who are like, you know, maybe the fans of the show or who, I don't know, just are like younger too or yeah. just like a normal human. $80, like, that's a lot hello. of money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on. Well, I think that's very yeah. nice of you and I think it also might contribute to the pay pay gap is that consideration yeah, for that's right it's totally true who might be wanting to buy them which is very yeah, sweet you're so right but so it's right. so annoying all the same yeah yeah it is yeah what, are, what the heck do i charge i think that yeah do you ever think like maybe yeah. you should charge more 39 yes that's it that's 38 dollars. okay do you ever think like yeah. maybe Just charge double and then do half as many no no. Okay. Because they're fun to do and they like feed they my soul. Fun. And people are so nice and they get them. Sometimes people just get them as their own um, uh, uh, pep talks. No, that's sweet. So they'll be like, hey, can I'm like going through a tough time. Can you just give me a pep talk or give me, you know, a little advice on, on, on like, you know, give me something to cheer me up. And I'm like. I got you. Is that in like the, your description <laughs> that that's your specialty is pep? No, talks? I didn't. Add, oh. I did. I think I said pep talk, but I should. Add, I should add that. I should write that in there. Yeah, now motivational. Yeah, <laughs> motivational. You know, I should do one yeah. and just be like, I do insults only. I'm sure people do that. I'm <laughs> sure there's like people who are famous. You and insult the comic dog or whatever. <laughs> I'm just yes. mean only. No inspiration. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Moving on. I just noticed I'm not on Wi-Fi, so I'm going to turn it on Wi-Fi. And if Ooh, if okay. we yeah. drop for a second, okay. then Let's see. I mean, it's on Wi-Fi, but it's on the Wi-Fi for my printer. So that's fun. That <laughs> that's that's, uh, that's. I can I don't still even hear you. I think we're good. Thank goodness. Did it switch? Is it good? It is. Okay. Woo! I think it's going to be. Oh, that sounds different. Oh no. Okay. I thought we weathered the storm. Oh, that is lovely. Your voice is clear. Oh, okay. I, it's going to sound the same, I'm sure. But, you know, it's just nice to hear For you. you were sounding a little underwater. And I was just like thinking that it was my, it's just like, I don't know. What if I was like, well, I am that. underwater. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was a really good fish noise, huh? Moving on. Yes. Well, I mean... Before I move on, might I encourage you to try out some beautiful jewelry from Oh my gosh. Ana Luisa? Yes. I mean Ugh, I'm wearing mine right now. It makes your whole outfit sing. It's like yes. the icing on the cake, beautiful, timeless pieces. Their jewelry is my favorite because it's carbon neutral. So it's yes. great for the environment, unlike most jewelry. And it's exceptional quality and they have a great warranty and they make things in limited batches. So it's like really high standards. They want it to be perfect and it's affordable. I just love they have fair prices, but these pieces will be timeless. They'll last forever. Great gift, like I said, for a graduate or, you know, someone you I don't want to be all hippity dippity, but I wear one 
uh, that is like a sucks up negative energy stone. Oh. And I, and I wear that so far, so and good. it makes me feel centered and balanced. And then when my mom came to visit, she goes, oh, is that an onyx stone? I'm like, yeah. She goes, good. That is what you should be wearing. Okay. And see? she didn't even know. Protect like, yourself, you people. Know. She didn't even know that it was carbon neutral and good for the environment. She thought it was badass. She just thought it was beautiful too. And yes. uh, they have a deal 10% off for us. So that is super fun. Ooh. Um, AnnaLuisa.com slash brain candy. Go treat yourself and your loved ones and use our code brain candy to get 10% off. I absolutely recommend them. They're a great brand making beautiful, sustainable jewelry. Go to, uh, AnnaLuisa.com slash brain candy code brain candy. And that's A N A L U I S A.com slash brain candy code brain candy. Love it. Okay. I've been into cute little ear cuffs on people lately. Like, Ooh. I love, like the whole, yeah. They have those. That's super cute. Okay. 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 Um, I wanted to know if you read about the new Victoria's Secret models going on today. No. What? They no. got rid of the angels. You know the Okay, great. Weirdos. Bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Uh, see you never, whatever TJ would say. And then uh, they uh, hired uh, people like Megan Rapinoe and um, okay. the soccer player. Susie. You're go- oh yes. Um, See, so yeah, it's like you gotta you gotta like cue me. I'm like, well, Susie. I thought because she's you know a soccer names. player, but you'd know her to see. And Priyanka Chopra, uh, she's married to the Jonas oh brother, my God. as you may know. This is great. And they have a trans model. They have um, yes. There you go. Oh, you like humans? You know, like like beautiful, inclusive oh, sized models. All different yes, things. like what, actually inclusive size models. In addition to the model changes, which is a great thing, um, but they just have so much work to do because Victoria's Secret has been so toxic um, mm-hmm. for a really long time. In fact, the CEO was best mm-hmm. friends with Jeffrey Epstein, if that doesn't tell you <gasps> what you need to know. No. Oh, yeah. It was oh, a big expose in the New York God. Times. And, like, they had a super toxic work environment. But this is something I never knew. Ew. Victoria's yeah. Secret company never like promoted or celebrated mother's day because that's not sexy oh my god i never knew that i'm so grossed out they never sold post mastectomy bras or nursing bras i'm so grossed out how gross is that because they want to hide it (sighs) like if it's not sexy they pretended like it didn't exist I or feel in their idea guilty sexy. for owning the, the, the I, owning the items that I do from there now. And let me just be I very burn clear. Them. I am not saying they're not sexy. That is their idea of what is sexy and what is not. Right. But I think it's so sexy. Yes. And like, what a shame that they didn't have nursing <sighs> so bras or post bras. Because like, bras. what that does for the the. For everybody, the female and the male consumer, like, uh, who's yes. like, oh my God, we just are doing all the wrong things. Okay. This is great. I love change. Change, change, I mean, change. They have a lot of work to do and they need to like yeah. say sorry or something. Cause yeah. I just, I used to work at Victoria's Secret. Like I love their um, products, but it just is cause I was naive and also i live in a patriarchal society and didn't notice the problems but i'm so glad that they're going to actually acknowledge you know motherhood and um you know cancer survivors and acknowledge motherhood right acknowledge how every human ended up here yeah and the reason we have breasts I c- oh my god in the first that i didn't even fucking think about that susie it's so gross shame on me I can't believe that right now I did not make the connection between <laughs> boobs and there's the purpose that they serve. Oh my God. I'm having an internal breakdown right now. I mean, like, I'm just like, I can't believe that I just did that. Like that you've, you've showed me how <laughs> disconnected I am from that association. And I'm like, I just think of them. When I think of boobs in terms of Victoria's Secret, I just think of them pushed together, yeah. shoved up, and covered in sparkles, and like. Well, and they basically has sabotaged. any of those underwear ever been comfortable? The ones that like that, that some of them seem unwearable. There was a oh my god, it's just so funny. Oh, like, they even and I'm did, saying there's a place for that for sure. 
Well, sure, yeah. But they make it feel like it's like it can't be the only option, and the only thing that can be sexy is this male, like myopic lens of one dimension. And the only people they're sexy for are these people. Yeah. No, 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 no. So that's good news. Good share, Suze. Like, and you got me all raged up, like all fired up. My heart rate's like like up. It's unbelievable because I, I didn't – I can't believe the nursing bra thing. Like because no, they sabotage their company. own business because do you know how much money you can make off of these products? And they chose not to make that money because it's just like oh icky God. to them. Icky. Oh! We're so backwards. I mean, and it's still like that with um, sizes beyond what I don't know what the typical limit is, but they could make so much (sighs) money from a lot of people who want cool clothes, but they don't because it's like, quote, bad for their brand in their eyes. Yeah. It's not good. That's not good. So this is just one example. That is a good, I don't want to give them any. More of my well now I want to do, now I, can I give do I like them now well I like it's that still changing. controversial I we like that we're cha- we're gonna watch from the sidelines there's other you know other companies yeah that are there's doing other way companies gonna, so you choose yes. to spend your money where they represent your values yes. uh, that's a good thing to say yes any yes. hoodles did you watch mm-hmm. the Bo Burnham comedy special no everybody's talking about this though is it and it's a uh, Here's the thing. Believe yeah. it or not, you wouldn't know this about me, or you wouldn't think get yeah. guess this. I do not like musical I comedy. I knew you were going to say that. I know. why do you know that about me? Well, why do you, would you guess that? And why do I like that? Because you love a punchline, and like musical comedy isn't really like a punchline. It's just clever lyrics. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's not a, a laugh line. Usually, the, yeah. I think it's this one you would like. Do you, is it does? Do you like it? No, do you I like don't. It? Normally, I hate musical comedy. I agree with you. Wow. Do you like a musical? Not as much as my husband. <laughs> <laughs> He's obsessed with musicals. Oh my god, Adam and I can go see musicals. Like, I don't. Like, I don't know if I like them or not. Like, he'll, if you said, "Hey, Adam, what do you think of Seven Brides for Seven Brothers?" He would be so excited. Okay, yeah, we. I, you I'm have with to you. Do I don't it. even know what the fuck that is. <laughs> so I'll ask him about I that think when it's I come just, over. Hey, you know you how you are Brothers about like Brothers? Toy Story. I think he watched that as a kid, so oh, it yes. makes him feel that way. Oh, okay. yeah. So this okay, okay, this okay, okay. special, it's it's phenomenal. It really is. And wow, I did not think it was going to be. Usually, when I get Tons okay. of people telling me to watch something. I'm like, this is going to be garbage. Why do we think that? <laughs> well, because it usually oh. is. Because like most oh, people so have funny. bad taste. You know. Yes. Except with Interstellar. They're all right. <laughs> In this case, though, it was, it, it's, I, do you, let me tell you this. It yeah. pains me deeply to say that a white man is genius. Oh wow! This was good. It was it was genius. It really was. I could, I cannot believe it. So the premise is that wow, Suze, I can't <laughs> wait to watch this. Move <laughs> over, The Bachelorette. <laughs> <laughs> Bo Burnham became famous at fifteen on YouTube. He just wrote a few songs in his bedroom for his family as a joke, and they went viral. And from that point on, he's just been, like, prodigious. Like, he had a Comedy Central Mm -hmm. special at 18, which was the youngest anyone has ever done that. And then he stopped in 2016 because he started having panic attacks when he would perform Mm -hmm. on stage Mm -hmm. and decided to take time off to deal with his mental health. Yes. And he was doing great and he was healing. And in January 2020, he decided he was ready to come back. And then the funniest thing happened, Um, COVID. And so he couldn't perform. And so he was like most of us going crazy and wanted to, felt depressed and really upset. And this was a way for him to just be distracted from life. And so he wrote all these songs that are 
a commentary on digital culture. And think about it. Oh. This is a person, he's 30 now. He has lived his whole life in the comments section because he started at 15. And yep. you can see the anguish and mm. um, pain that is caused when you want to disappear, but you need an audience to survive. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And I felt like I could oh, relate I to that to because this. of reality TV and everything. And growing yes. up, I, you know, being on TV during your formative years and all the feedback you get about what you look like, what, how you act, whatever. But yeah, it's oh. just he does a great job of acknowledging the fact that he's a white man and like all the things you would want him to say but it's i love it it's so great when we acknowledge our mental like when people are faced with mental health issues or or i don't want to say issues i don't even like calling it that just like people are honest about their human experience yeah and the the effects that uh being a person uh, being a person is having on them it and he's raw so, about it in the in the special, yeah. especially towards the end. <sighs> like it gets better and better the oh, more you great. watch it. And great. by the end, you oh really God, see. Oh my God, I can't wait. Like the pain. I love when you give a good review to something. I don't think there's anything that you've said, this is really good, that hasn't been really, really, really good. But just know that I'm on the same page with you about musical comedy in general. And like. Yeah. Okay. So that says a lot. Yeah. This is different. Okay. This is good. We're on the same page with this. So I recommend it. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. It is unusual and it is not like a laugh a minute, like a typical comedy special, but it is funny. Okay. We like that. We love dark comedy. This is like, is it like a, um, not similar, but, um, who do we love? That's the, well, oh my gosh, from not Australia, but close to Australia. Oh, Hannah Oh my gosh. Hannah Gatsby, New thank Zealand. you. My, yeah, New Zealand. I was like, I, my brain's not even working. Hello. Well, yeah, it's... Like how that's like funny, but also like yeah. makes you think yes. and like touches your heart. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, he I did love that. a couple thing. bits where he would like kind of pretend like he was going to do real jokes. And when he did one, I was like, Sarah would love this joke. He said like, you, I really feel like pirates should take better care of their maps. <laughs> And he, <laughs> <laughs> and he did a whole bit about it. I'm like, Sarah would love this joke. He's like, they're I always tea stained and burnt. They're, they <laughs> are like that. And it's uh, extra hilarious if you've ever had to go through the art or, of like trying to make a pirate <laughs> right. map. And you really have to like light that shit on fire. <laughs> right. You're thinking, what are they doing? Oh my God. That is so hilarious. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I could like that. Okay. But the rest of it's Look at not how funny like I it. think just that is. <laughs> or do We're I just think you're chat. hilarious and no, it's good delivery? No, it's him. Okay. Oh, I can't wait. So That's highly so recommend funny, that. Um okay, last thing I think I will talk about is Last thing? Well, I don't last know. Thing? We'll see how long it takes so us. Fast. This there okay. was an article about the importance of friendship. And it was looking <gasps> at friendship from an uh, anthropological point of view. So it was like mm -hmm. studying people over mm -hmm. a big area. Mm -hmm. And it was saying that most people can only handle a social network of about 150 people. That's our typical. Oh, my God. I was going to guess five. <laughs> well, it, there's a breakdown. So that's like people you know, even like. Oh, okay. Okay. That you would be oh. like, oh, that's my friend, but you haven't talked to them in five years, you know? Okay. Okay. So yeah. 150 total. Whew. You know, kind of like who might come to your or, wedding. Like, yeah. Okay. That, yes. that number. And yeah. it was saying that there's an innermost circle and it's four to five people. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Okay. That's it. And that's, that's the like your main group that you might even talk to them every day. Yeah. Like, you're, it can include family. And your kids and anybody that's significant. And then mm -hmm. there's the next group. It's called the sympathy group, which they didn't say why they call it that, but it's 10 people. Oh, I know exactly why they call it that. Why? They're the people who who you'd go to if like... You've been like, wronged? Or no, I almost like you lose... There's somebody close to you passes away. 
these are the 10 people who are going to provide you that emotional support Aww. that may not be your best friend that you talk to every day, but you know that this person is going to be there for you and these people are like, yeah, they're like, if something happened, you tell your partner like, hey, this is what this white person, women person, would refer person. to as their tribe. Yes, <laughs> correct. Okay. So, yes. and they are like the breakaway from the immediate family. They're for like a night out. You might even talk to them each week. And when you combine the first five and then those 10 people, that's like 60% of your friend time is with those guys. But then the remaining 40% is of the 135 other people. Mm -hmm. And they were going on about something we already know, which is that being within a supportive social network reduced the risk of mortality by 50%. Wow. Which is on par with quitting smoking and more important than your BMI, which is good to remember. Gosh. Friendship matters. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. You know in fact, funny? don't care about that other stuff. Just care about friends and then you'll be good with the, all the other stuff. Yeah. And it was saying that most people are closer to, with their best friend than they are with their lover, their romantic partner. That mm-hmm. that co, they call it, what did they call it? Cross sex cooperation, like with your if you're in a relationship with um, the opposite sex, yeah. that it's cognitively the costliest of all cooperation. The, it's time oh, consuming. I could agree with that. And emotionally draining of relationships because of the need to trade unequal currencies and because you must, quote, oh mind God. read a brain that probably operates oh. in a distinctly different way than yours. That is the most important takeaway from this if you are in a relationship with uh, the, the opposite, opposite sex. sex. Yeah. Holy crap. Isn't it? Because it is. It's translating it. It's the same as having a conversation in uh, a language that's not foreign yeah, to you. Yeah, and like how hard you have to work. Or that's not, not uh, uh, native to you. Yeah, you know, when it's your second language. language or whatever, how hard that is and how focused you What was you the word be? that we discovered is totally different? If okay, was it okay? Or yes. all right? Okay. When they say okay. 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 And you're like, okay, you just agreed to do that. And they're like, no, okay, I heard you. Yes. What? So we have to like, let's start with that, you know? <laughs> so fuck that, man. We are separated by a common language. Dude, that's so crazy. Yeah. Huh. But would you say that that's been your experience, that you've been closer with a female friend than male partners? Or not? As far as able to be vulnerable, because like, well, let's define closeness. I okay. think that's an important thing too, because like... If we're looking at emotional intimacy, absolutely. I feel I've definitely been far, well, and physical, let's be real. Um, But like I've definitely been able to be closer to women because there isn't that translating thing. There isn't that, um, you know. Yeah, uh, there's an understanding. There's an understanding. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, especially because... Some of the things that I need understanding for are things like being a survivor of sexual abuse. I think that's something that women can understand in a way that men, even male survivors, like they just understand in a different way. They understand some of the same things. What? You are jogging my memory on along those lines. Okay. So, you know how I said I hate calling a white man a genius? Yeah. When I was watching the Bo Burnham thing, I thought to myself, like, how annoying it is that so often, the especially in comedy, the white men create things that I think of in that way. And um, I was, like, trying to unpack, like, why that might be. I thought, I think so much of being a woman is um, so difficult because we're always, like, just trying to not get raped and killed. That, <sighs> yes, like, so much of our time and mental energy is to do that and then to take care of other people that we just don't have the bandwidth or time or energy to make these same, sometimes the same type of art to just sit in a room and right. create. I wonder well, if this you is, agree. Yes. I totally agree, Susie, because the same, it's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yeah. And it's even worse for women of color. People of color. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. 100%. Totally agree with you. God. Can't like, wait till just, we get to hang out IRL <laughs> and get all jacked up on these combos. Because it's in like person. the microaggressions and like the constant yes. Yes. survival mode, especially in professional mm-hmm. settings where you're like, is he trying to whatever, you know? Mm. 
And it puts you in a different place cognitively. Yeah. It puts you in it. You are actually functioning in a different brain state. Yeah. And if you can remove then that, if you don't have to worry about all that stuff, you just have so much more, so many more resources internally. Yes. A calm mind functions in a creative place. A mind that's in a place of um, being uh, like alert and, or even in like, you know, kind of fear is in one of a emotional place. Yeah. And you go, oh, women are so emotional because you put us in a state We're of in trauma. fear. <laughs> that's the trauma response. Stop putting us in that state and we'll stop responding like that. Yeah, stop raping us. It's like they're the rain clouds and they're like, oh, why are you guys so wet? Be- st- yeah. You're raining on us. Why do you guys have umbrellas? Stop raining on me. Mm-hmm. Then I won't be wet. That's sort of a loose metaphor, but it works. You'll yeah, figure, and you know it's I mean. true. Okay. So <sighs> anyway, so the friendship thing, it applies there too because then there's an understanding, which I imagine is more like, let's say if you're a black woman with another black woman, there's all this stuff you don't have to explain. Yep. You have a lived right. experience of commonality. Yeah. And so you can get closer faster. Yeah. Yeah. And or and it doesn't need to be and here's the thing, it doesn't need to be the same experience or the uh uh that so somebody has to be just like you. I think it needs to be an openness to hearing the other person and being um Having empathy. Mm-hmm. It, we need to raise the empathy. Well, that's for fucking sure. And that sure. just so happens to be like a female. Because there are empathetic males that absolute, I absolutely feel like I'm very, very, very close to. Mm-hmm. And can be very open with. And so there definitely are exceptions to that rule of like... But I think on a whole, it's definitely more women. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's just so, it's so interesting. Relationship dynamics are fascinating to me. Mm-hmm. Friendship is fascinating. Mm-hmm. Be- and then the, the um, romantic relationships, you know, cause you read about these couples that are doing things differently. Like they're co-parenting as platonic people, but they aren't, they have no romantic relationship. Yeah. Um, And that seems so foreign, but I don't know why. Why would you need to be romantic to be good parents to a kid? And you know, and it, every, the relationship that's going to work the best is the relationship that's the best negotiated Mm -hmm. amongst both people. It's really like a business. Yeah. You're coming into this and if you like both have a, 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 have the same interest in the company and the, the business and growing it in the same way then it succeeds and it does well. And if you negotiate things, oh, hey, you know, we're going to make these kind of changes, not just like change and then hope things like work themselves out or keep secrets from your business partner, whatever mm-hmm. it may be. Well, like you and I have keep, yeah. keep being psychically connected recently. Yes, like, like, like for real. Same time text. And the other like day that. it happened The like, and I was like, what happened? Something happened and I swear I was like, I said, I can't wait for you of- to come here. I can't wait to oh, see you. Oh, yeah. And I was like, it was right as I was pushing, like, purchase on the ticket. Isn't that funny? And I was like, what? Is she Is she, is she watching? Yeah, it keeps so, happening. And yeah, then I love that. It reminded me um, that I had read this article about brains when they're in, in sync with each other and how, mm-hmm. like, it was describing how they use these electrodes. And when two people imitated each other's hand movements, their brains showed, like, coupled wave patterns. Yes. And, like, it was just funny because in the article it said, like, the, the person was quoted as saying, like, this is, there's nothing spooky or, like, telepathy going on. And that made me think there's definitely something spooky. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, they were so wanting you They're to like, know. But don't worry, guys. This isn't, like, you know, any of that, uh, you know, old, like, uh, uh, psychic shit. It's definitely that psychic shit. Yeah, because they are kind of, um, in this article, the yeah. su- study in particular was kind of baffling to the scientists and they couldn't figure out how this was uh-huh. happening. And they were just like, nothing spooky though, okay? It's definitely okay. spooky. Yep, I love it. it cause, I love know, it. And see, everybody knows this on a, like an anecdote. Like we all know yes. this. Like anybody, any mother 
knows this about their child if they've had a bad dream and they like, you know, lives far away or something like that. Or if you've had like my siblings, we will always call each other at the same time. Yeah. Like Lucas calls me. I call Jordan. Jordan calls Luke. What, somehow it works. So, so. And we're talking You're within different thirty time seconds zones too. It's not and, like just and we're in different time yeah. zones, and it ha- it's it's to the point where we've independently talked about it with each with like I talk with Lucas and we're like, isn't that weird? And he talks with Jordan, but we've never talked about it together. Mm-hmm. And then like, wow! But my mom is like, well, of course, because you're si- all psychic, <laughs> and so you know, I think she's just right, and everybody is a little. It's funny too because the synchrony was um, dependent upon. The social dynamic. So if there was a leader, let's say it's your pastor or your teacher, they the the synchrony between the leader and the follower was greater than just like two followers. So like you and your teacher would have more of that than just two students together. So wow. that stuff is interesting. And this was in the New York Times. And I just love that okay. they don't know what's cooking. I love that too. And then you know what I think about that? Because this is, oh, I love doing this show so much because we can just connect the dots yeah. of a bunch of different studies that are so fucking cool. Mm-hmm. So I remember way, way back in the beginning of that podcast, we talked about a study on um, people who had been together for more than 40 years. And they said, what yeah. is the thing that you like most about your partner? And they said, um, I love when they're just in their like doing their thing and like being themselves. And then there was another one that said that uh, partners that can teach their partner something that you can learn from your partner when you're like in awe of what they do, that, that whole thing that of like loving your partner, like when you're most attracted to them is when you're basically like in awe of them. And when you're in awe of somebody or can be curious, then there's room for them to teach you about something. And when you can teach somebody about something, you create these strong feelings of attachment. Yes. So I think that is kind of what that is. So we're basically conjoined at this point, you and I. Definitely. And <laughs> you teach me things all That's the time. How I feel. And I absolutely in my I'm always like WWSD. <laughs> you know what that is. Yes, Everybody knows. Thank you. I'm honored. And it's not Sarah. No. <laughs> obviously. Sometimes she replaces the egg S with Cardi B though. Right. That is sometimes what, you know, yeah, no. sometimes what would, but my mom did said it the other day. She said, we were, I don't know what we were talking about. We were talking about like probably the same thing about like why I need to like, cause my mom's like, you need everything new. You need a new bed. You need a new mat. Like, and she's right. I need yeah. all, I'm getting everything. It's like I'm doing it and you know, big girl stuff. Yes. Um, but she's like, what would Beyonce do? And you I'm mean. like, you're right. Beyonce would. And then I even told, and she didn't even know about the lemonade album. The lemon. Oh. And, and then I told her, and she was like, "Oh, well." Then she really would. I love get, you get, get all it's everything. Like she's new. been in a, a a bubble. Oh my gosh, it is really fun. That's yes, so it is funny. funny. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad we're in sync, and we should wind it down. Yes, yes. Oh gosh, because I got to go out so and wound get up. on the slip and slide real quick. Oh my gosh! <laughs> but hopefully not into a <laughs> into puddle a of toilet. Ebola. <laughs> into Ebola? No, E. coli. E. coli yeah, potato, potato. <laughs> And I, I would love. I look forward to hearing whether you guys think the ethnic food aisle is racist. Oh yes! Oh my God, we covered so much stuff today. And we talked about how car roofs are for women. Question yeah, mark? And, but you know, like it, once again, it, it, like is this the same thing as like you know, guys just and like, do we have a society where what you're not allowed to ever be uh, 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 comfortable? Right. Come on now. Did we just like realize that comfort is a feminine yeah, thing? Yeah, pain no, that's is not silly. masculine. Calm down. Right. Women oh on God, cameo yes. are shortchanging themselves. But yep. Victoria's Secret. Sarah's fee is fair. <laughs> Sarah's <laughs> fee is fair for to be more inclusive to those, you know. Yes, yes. Maybe have a few yeah, less. Yes, so we're going to sit back and watch what they do. Then uh, Bo Burnham, you got to watch that. That's really good. Oh, yes, right, right. Oh, I can't wait. And then just remember well, your friends are like in, on your wavelength oh. and it's a beautiful thing. Yep. 
Okay. Oh, I love that. I wish there were some way we can just measure. I want to know everything about like, I'm like, how Susie and Sarah are exactly alike. Remember when we took that <laughs> test independently and it said like, I was Dwight yeah. and you were Michael no, Scott. No, I'm or vice Dwight. Ver- you're Dwight. I'm Michael Believe Scott. Believe me, I'll and never forget. I was horrible. I'm Phil Dunphy and you're... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the lady uh, whatever the mom is claire dunphy so funny independently guys that's what we got that is so, so stupid and great i love it so much i love you don't forget I love to all leave us listeners. a review and all that we love you bye and we'll see you next time bye 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 bye